Hey everyone, I'm Jordan Spivey, Joel is my dad, Travis Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our science tutorial videos. In today's video, we will discuss the three parts of the cell theory, so, so let's, let's do this. this. Our learning trick for today is, I can identify and explain the three parts of the cell theory. There is an old saying that seeing is believing. At one point in our history, it was impossible to see and explore the smaller parts of the world past what we could see with our naked eye. Think about it. Protons, neutrons, electrons, atoms, and countless other substances were considered non-existent because we could not physically see them with our own eyes. And now we introduce the microscope. Now the first versions of the microscope weren't very powerful, but as scientists improved and evolved the features and technology of microscopes, it allowed us to explore deeper and deeper into a world we never knew existed. In 1665, an English man by the name of Robert Hooke used an early compound microscope to view a slice of cork that came from a plant. He said that the cork looked like it was made up of thousands of tiny chambers of cells. He called the chambers cells because they looked like the small rooms he would see in monasteries which were called, you guessed it, cells. In current day, we know that the cells he observed under the microscope weren't empty, but filled with many parts that have their own functions. Another scientist by the name of Anton van Leeuwenhoek used the microscope to observe pond water. To his surprise, he viewed thousands of tiny living organisms that were everywhere in the pond water. He observed several other things and saw that these tiny organisms were everywhere in his own mouth. These organisms he was observing are known as bacteria. Credit for developing the cell theory is largely given to two scientists, Matthias Schleiden and Theodore Schwann. Rudolf Virchow contributed to the cell theory as well, but is often not credited for his work. But we'll come back to him a little later in the video. As Schleiden and Schwann shared information on plant and animal cells they gathered throughout the years, this finally led up to the cell theory that we know of today, which is composed of three parts. First, all living things are made up of cells. Second, cells are the basic units of structure and function in living things. Third, all cells come from pre-existing cells. Now let's do an in-depth review of all three parts of the cell theory starting now. Let's begin with number one. All living things are made of cells. In 1838, the botanist Matthias Sliden concluded that all plants are composed of cells. A year later, the zoologist Theodore Swan came to the same conclusion about animals. Both of these scientists identified key differences between plant and animal cells. With their combined research and newly obtained knowledge, Schleiden and Swan were able to conclude that all of the things are made up of cells. So no matter big or small organisms are, they all have something in common. They are all made of cells. Number two, cells are the basic unit of structure and function in living things. Schleiden and Schwann also contributed this part of the cell theory. They noted that cells make up the smallest levels of living organisms such as you, me, and all other living things. Cells are where the metabolic processes occur that keep organisms alive. This is why they are called the basic unit of life because all of life depends on the proper functioning of cells. Number three, all cells come from pre-existing cells. Now we come back to Rudolf Virchow. In 1855, he was studying how disease affects living things. As he was studying cells up under a microscope, Virchow noticed that the cells were dividing or splitting up in half leading to the formation of two new cells. This process of cells splitting and producing two new cells is called mitosis. From his observations and the information he gathered from the other scientists, Virchow was able to conclude all cells come from pre-existing cells by splitting and producing two new cells. And that's our video for today. Now let's test your knowledge to see how proficient you are with identifying and explaining the three parts of the cell theory. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the bottom right of the screen or you can click the link in the description box below the video. Remember, 80% are higher for proficiency, record your results on your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you, you better keep, keep going, going because it's not over until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also click that bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our awesome videos. Peace and have a positive, productive day.